Good morning and uh, welcome. Today I'm going to look at some attenuators that were given to me and just check them out on the spectrum analyzer and see how they work, whether they're still working or whether they they may be faulty. So we'll start off in the um, tracking generator and I've actually normalized it. You can see our straight line here 1 to 1 1.5 gigs and we've got our normal reference at 90% of the scale so we should be able to easily see any changes in uh, the levels. We'll start with the first one which is a 10 dB attenuator and we'll just plug that little level in and 10 dB. Now that is fine, it's simply easily 10 dB. Let's just change the amplitude and the scale per division down to 5 and you can still see quite clearly we're at minus 10. Okay, so that one I'm happy with. Next one we're going to try is a 20 dB and it's supposedly good up to 2 gigahertz so we'll have a look and see what we've got here. Plug it in and yes it's getting a little bit woolly um, just down further let's have a look so from about 1.2 gig onwards not looking the fastest that ever was, or the best rather, but um, up to there we've, we've got a pretty good uh, 20 dB attenuator. The next one is SMA, not BNC, and it's rated for 5 watts, so you'll notice it's got a bit of a heat sink on it. The other ones, by the way, were only um, rated for 2 watts, 20 dB, and much the same as, well it's actually flatter than the previous one. Now one of the things you've got to watch out for when you're doing the, the conversions from SMA to BNC for example, is that you've got a reasonably good quality um, plug and socket. Because as I found earlier today when I was just mucking around, um, I was getting some really strange readings and that was put down to a bad uh, socket, which is now in the bin so I can't put it back on and show you how bad it was. Okay, that's another one, 20 dB SMA, um, only rated for 1 watt this one. It's quite a lot smaller as you can see. So uh, yeah that was it. Now the next thing we have and I bought, I actually purchased two of these 20 dB, 20 watt and I hope you can see them and we'll plug those in or that one rather and there we have it 20 dB and I, I bought two of them actually, so there's the second one. I'll just scroll it around a wee bit so you might be able to read the writing on it. Now, back to the things that I was given. This is a, a DC block rated at uh, 2 watts and supposedly good up to 2 gigs and it goes as you can see no attenuation at all and it itself is pretty good turn that marker on Select the marker and 
There we have it. it starts to waver a little bit from about 820 megs up. Handy for, say for example, an oscilloscope or, or something like that where you actually know you've got some signal or some DC on it and you want to block them. Now this next one's interesting. I was given a couple of these. They're low pass filters at 10.7 meg and those of you will know that 10.7 meg is also a IF frequency. So in we go and we have to change our frequency and we'll stop frequency at round about let's say 20 megahertz and there's our filter and we'll go back to our marker and bring the marker frequency back to say 15 megahertz and up we come there's the start of the drop around about 12.6 and at 10.7, around about there, it's, it's fine. So as far as a filter goes, it's showing the right characteristics of a filter. If we change our frequency a little and step out from 20 meg out to, let's say, 40 meg, you can easily see it's doing its job as a low-pass filter. Okay, now the next ones are different again and what we have now and which were also donated are some splitters. Here it is, it was one of them. It's a two port splitter, mini circuits and let's just shove it in and we need to read and let's change our frequency again to say 1.5 gig so there's a little bit of drop off on it now it's not terminated on all ports so if I terminate it like this and we change our amplitude scale per division of say 1 dB you'll see that we're sitting around about 6 dB up until whoops I shouldn't have done that scale is 1 dB back to the marker and around about a gig they're supposedly rated to 2 gigs, but anything over a gig I, I wouldn't really be looking too closely. And the thing with what I'm using these for, I have a GPS DO running on 10 megahertz, and I use that to synchronize all of the instruments that have that capability here on the workbench. So we have one standard oscillator basically which is GPS aligned. Now along with this one I also have and we'll just pull it up a four port and we poke a signal into it we look for an output not looking too fresh so we'll terminate the other ports. These are just 50 ohm terminations. And the last port. And this doesn't quite meet the specifications from the manufacturer. As you can see we're 6.5 dB down to 10 dB or so. So not what I was expecting and um, somewhat surprising. Now one of the other things with the splitters 
is the uh, seg segregation, separation from channel to channel. So if we put this into what I typically call an output and this into an input and terminate, oh sorry, both outputs cross channel and we're looking at 6.2, 6 6.3 which also meets the manufacturer's specification. Passive as opposed to active, no power required and you just have a nice little two-way device. Okay, that's about it for now and thank you very much for watching and hopefully, oh here it is, here we are it wasn't in the rubbish bin, it was to go to the rubbish bin this little BNC to SMA it's a horror, it's a little shocker keep this for now and um, let's put it up somewhere safe and next time I do a video we'll just put a little bit on the extra on there for a bad quality BNC to SMA thank you Well, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and um, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Thank you.